Alright guys, welcome to round one of our Modern 8-Man with Bringing Gifts. Um, this is the 4 slash 5 color uh, Bring to Light um, Gifts Ungiven deck. Doing all of the value, all of the fun things, um, none of the punishment? I don't know. Well, we'll see how it goes, but we're on the play. And we have 5 land, Sylvan Carrioted, Gifts Ungiven. We have the best card in our deck, and we have a way to cast it on turn three, so I think this is a keep. Um, but this kind of hand can get destroyed pretty easily by a thought seize from an opponent. But um, against an unknown opponent on the play, I think we can keep this. We play. Um, how many mana sources do we play? I think we played 24 land. So, I mean, we're not going to get five, uh, five land hands that often, but um, we, we do get a lot of, like, four land hands. But I think this is keepable. I'm going to attempt to make this... Maybe not. All right, we're just going to have to deal with that. Um, so because we have a forest, we want to fetch a non-green uh, duel that's either, like, a hollowed fountain or a watery grave. Um, and then we could just play Forest turn 2, play Sylvan Carrioted. Um, let me think. The the mana is the hardest part of this deck uh, when you're first learning. And I'm still learning with this deck. I have not played many matches with it. So I think we want to go um, Hollowed Fountain into Forest. So we want to play our Misty. So we'll play Misty, pass. End of his turn, um, fetch up a hollowed fountain, put it into play tapped, play a forest, and then next turn we can just like play island, gifts ungiven if we want. Looks like burn. So the uh, main deck Thrag Tusk and the main deck Baneslayer Angel is really good for us. Um, since we know we're playing Burn, uh, we can start figuring out what our gifts pile is going to be. Where were you last turn? Um, I imagine we want to be getting, uh, we could just get like Baneslayer Angel, Thrag Tusk, a Burial Rites, maybe a Removal Spell, or maybe an Eternal Witness, or Lingering Souls. I think Lingering Souls might go in that pile. Um, but first thing we're doing is casting this Carrioted. I don't think our opponent can kill us quick enough. I guess we could also just um, gifts for uh, uh, Umbreal Rights and Iona on red. It depends on what his board looks like at that point, but we should be fine. So if he has two lightning bolts, then I guess we're in trouble. Um, it would need to be like a lightning bolt and a shard volley because we're in combat. So he and he didn't like you know pre-combat uh, lava spike. I think I just block here. He doesn't lose anything by attacking, and if he kills my carrioted, he kills my carrioted. This is interesting, young Pyromancer, he might not be burn. He might be uh you know like a blue red deck that he just has a he just like drew two basic mountains. Um I don't think that's likely, but it's definitely possible. Let's see what he does on this turn. Gutter Snipe. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Gutter Snipe deal, deals two damage to each opponent. So maybe he's Storm. Maybe he's some like B deck. Aha! Uh -huh. The truth comes out. So with three cards in hand. 
I don't know. I might just want to get Ellismorn. It ends the game quickly. We can snapcast our gifts after that. That wipes his board, deals with his gutter snipe. I don't really want to get Iona and then him be able to cast a bunch of blue spells. But he played three basic mountains. I don't know if he's like mono red. I don't really know what's going on here. Maybe I should know what this deck is, but uh, oh, choose target opponent. We're gonna cast gifts on Given. I think I just I'm at fourteen. He's got four cards in hand. I feel like I just want to get Elishnorn. It handles his board. If he's got a whole bunch of, like, I don't think he can fit, uh, you know, a huge density of burn spells alongside, you know, he's got Monastery of Swiss Spear, Young Pyromancer, or Gutter Snipe. That could, those could be, like, and they probably are the only creatures in this deck, and the rest is, like, Jataxian Probe and Burn Spells. Um, we haven't, he might just be Mono Red, and he's playing Burn Spells and Jataxian Probe. Um, I think it's more likely that he's Blue Red, and he's got, like, Serum Visions and stuff like that. I don't know. I think Elish Norn is the safest, uh, the safest option. So Elish Norn, um, Bale Rights. And this is still really good. Next turn we can snapcast our gifts and uh, get stuff that gains life. I think he's got a that's he's got a hard time winning from here. Active treason would be good. That that's the high level insight that I can offer you right now. All right, so he has blue red. Yeah, there's the pyromancer ascension. Okay. So we can Snapcaster Mage, um, grabbing, we could grab Abrupt Decay, Soul Tide Charm, Maelstrom Pulse, um, Lingering, or Eternal Witness maybe, and we could just blow up his Ascension this turn. No, we can't. We're, I didn't count the Snapcaster Mage mana, so that'll be next turn. Um, if we attack for six, that leaves us six mana for the Snapcaster Gifts. I'm not sure what we get. He's got two cards in hand, no counters on the Ascension. All right, I think we attack first and just pass. Give our opponent one more turn of information to help us figure out what we're supposed to do with our deck that does everything. So one counter on the Ascension. He's dead next turn to our swing anyways, because Elastorn is 4, 5, 6, plus uh, Snapcaster Mage um, swinging for 4. Make sure this resolves first. I 
the man base actually isn't that bad if you think about it. Um, we're able to play Hollowed Fountain, and then you know we have Island Forest, Swamp, Colorless Spell, uh, Colorless Land, and you know we're still fine. I guess two mana creatures that add anything helps a bunch, but. Alright, so he's dead next turn. We could get anything we wanted here. Um, I imagine we just want to play to blow up his ascension. So that means Eternal Witness, Soul Tide Charm, um, Abrupt Decay, and then there was one other, Maelstrom Pulse. Make sure these all of these selected. I don't think Slow Charm did. There we go. All right, you choose. This deck is so fun. I love this deck. Well, that's unfortunate. Vapor snag. Vapor snag. All right. You got me. Um I guess I'll pulse this thing. Play another one of these. Play a tap land, say go. Make sure we can just um, hard cast an Elishnorn. He's drawing lands, he can't kill us from nine. Swing for a million again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A million or six. Either or. Yeah, so our opponent floated out a little bit, but um, I don't know. Our deck, our deck cast uh, cast gifts on given, and that was enough. What's better than a five five flying first strike lifelink protection from demons and dragons? All right, game one to us against blue red storm. So against Storm, um, Eidolon, of Rhetoric, Eidolon of Rhetoric is really good. Uh, each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. That's this card. Um, we also have a uh, Cranial Extraction that can just search up his uh, Pyromancer Ascension, and we're good from there. Um, other than that, uh, Dispel is fine, but not the best. Uh, it's good for like you know countering a Manamorphose, and then you know his turn is done from that point. Um, I guess in, in that sense Negate is good as well. Um, we can safely board out things like Damnation. Um, Glendalendra is great but might be a little too slow. But you could say the same about everything in this deck. Engineered, ex engineered Explosives, pretty versatile I think. Trying to decide if we want the Iona or if we're just going to be searching up Elisnorn every time. The 
murderous cut can go. Bring in dispel, negate. This thing hits Pyromancer Ascension 2. We want the Eidolon of Rhetoric. And we want Cranial Extraction. I'm going to cut the path. I don't, I don't want to cut too much removal, but... Um, and I don't think we really want the life from the loam in this matchup. We're really just turning into like... So we're cutting a lot of our value things, but that's fine because um, none of that stuff really matters in this game. It's just stopping him from doing his combo, and then his deck just kind of falls apart from uh, at that point. Raven's Crime is fine. Um... Cutting life from the loan means we won't be able to like search up uh, our good Raven's Crime uh, gifts pile, which is like Raven's Crime, life from the loam, and then um, like Urborg and like maybe a Ghost Quarter or Lingering Souls or something. But uh, normally, like once we can just he runs himself out of cards anyways, just trying to find and set up his combo and like cast lightning bolts and stuff. So like ripping apart his hand outside of just taking you know. a uh, turn one, um, you know, turn one, thought seizing away his Pyromancer Ascension. He does a good enough job ripping apart his own hand that I don't think we need to help him with that. I think we cut the Iona. I think I'm just always going to search up Elish Norm, maybe. Or maybe it's the other way. I don't know. I think I'm going to force myself to search up Iona and see if I would have rather have Elish Norn instead. Because I think, I think uh, Iona probably would have been a little bit better in that game. Though, I don't know. We got rid of his board. And then he really didn't have much going after that. I think this hand's a little slow. It's unfortunate because Maelstrom Pulse and Cranial Extraction are both great cards. But, um, yeah, I'd feel better if we had a Mana Accelerant or a Discard Spell. So this is one five land hand. I will gladly mulligan. This is a lot better. <clears throat> Scry that overgrown tomb to the bottom. This is another turn three gifts. Um, so back to our mana base. We have a swamp, which means we could get hollowed fountain, basic forest, swamp, and have all of our colors. So I think we I think we lead with Misty Rainforest again. Maybe we're just supposed to lead with Misty Rainforest all the time. I'm trying to imagine an instance. I guess if I wanted to if I wanted to be fetching up basic island at some point in the game, I would be leading with the Verdant Catacombs, but um As it's gone so far in these two games, it seems like uh I'm searching up Hollowed Fountain and then Basic Forest most of the time. I'm sure there's a better way to uh, to fetch lands. This is, um, from my limited experience, what's been working for me, trying to minimize loss of life. Oh, my webcam is frozen. <clears throat> Hollywood Fountain. Basic forest. <laughs> so we could either use the Soul Tide Charm to pop a Pyromancer Ascension, or we could use it to just like loot away, you know, extra lands and mana creatures that we don't really need. Put as a young Pyromancer, which we could kill right now if we wanted to with the Soul Tide Charm and just play another mana guy. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do that. On one hand, like, so what are we worried about? We're worried about Spell Pierce here, possibly. So if you let him untap, he gets to start casting spells, 
He, if, if we put him on Spell Pierce, he's still going to have it, and it's going to get one of our spells either way. We could just play a Soul Tide Charm and a Birds. Um, like, if he Spell Pierces the thing, that's fine. He gets to start attacking us. We're just trying to determine if we want to be, like, minimizing the amount of tokens he can make with his young Pyromancer. We did board out our Elishorn. Maybe we're supposed to keep both of them in. I feel like I'm asking you guys a lot of questions, but you can't answer me. I think I'm just going to pass. I'm going to default to casting the most powerful thing, I, or doing the most powerful thing I can do, which is casting Gifts Ungiven. So. It worked for me last game. Yeah, with this relic, I feel like I'm just going to get creatures. Like, just creatures and interaction. Um, like, maybe Abrupt Decay, Baneslayer Angel, Thrag Tusk. Um, another Gifts I'm given. Opponent says go. Walking directly into it. I could wait and see if I draw a discard spell. I could just cast the Soul Chai Charm here to loot. But that seems that seems bad. The Soul Chai Charm could either kill the Pyromancer or pop the relic. Um Maybe I just let him counter this, and then I can Soul Tide Charm play a mana guy. I don't know. Uh, now I'm kind of wishing that I just end of turn Soul Tide Charm, uh, force him to blow his relic. And but if I was if that was the plan, then I should have cast Birds of, the Birds of Paradise last turn. I'm just gonna cast Gifts. <laughs> Seems very likely that this is getting countered, but all right. So, what do we have? Uh, a cranio extraction is pretty good. We can search up um, cranio extraction dispel. And then a bring to light and a gifts. Well, I think I want my cranio extraction in the uh, in my deck still. If I'm gonna br be bringing, casting bring to light. This is this is so hard. There's like a million things that we can do. All right, so we have to try and figure out what we're going for. We can't really go for the unburial rights thing because he has his relic out. We could just like go for value and try and take apart his hand. Uh, we could grab um, like discard spells and stuff. I think we should just try and turn this gifts into more gifts. So I think we want to get a bring to light, um, a gifts ungiven. An inquisition and a thought seize. Oh gosh. Bring to light, Inquisition, and selected Maelstrom Pulse. This, these should not be moving as I'm selecting stuff. That makes things even worse. All right. Bring to light, Inquisition, Gifts Ungiven, Thought Seize. I'm sure you guys will disagree with every single decision I've made up to this point, um, but that's good. That's how, that's how we learn and get better. So, um, Thought Seize went somewhere. There it is. Okay. That seems fun. I think this, uh, yeah, this is the best. It doesn't interact with Relic of Progenitus in any way. He's either giving us more cards or letting us take his cards. 
Um, and I think our draw steps, yeah, our draw steps are a lot better than his, so. Bear with me. All right, so he gave us the discard spells, which I'm happy with. We drew a dispel, which is interesting. Um, let's go ahead and start picking apart his hand. I think I'm fine with that. He gets a token, but I'll just save the dispel for something that matters. It's gonna remand my Inquisition, drawing another card. I could then just recast the Inquisition. It seems fine. No, show me your hand. I want to see it. What do you have? Maybe this ghost quarter should be on the field during all of this. Because if you played Spell Pierce here, I would just pay and then cast a birds. But he has a gutter snipe, a bolt, a void snare, return target non land permanent to its owner's hand, age attack soon probe. Yes, yeah, so we're taking the gutter snipe. Um, and then we're playing another Sylvan Carry Dead, so we have a dude to block, and we're going to pass, leaving up a Dispel. I think we should be good from here. Um, yeah, I don't want to counter that. We just need to find a way to clean up from these tokens. So an engineered explosives will do it. Um, just finding a thrag tusk will do it. So we're taking three this turn, and then he's going to start be being able to make a lot more tokens, but... As soon as we can get something on the field that can like block and start eating these things, we should be fine. Like a lingering souls trades with everything he's he's accomplished up to this point. So he has a void snare, which is useless. Um, and then I think two cards we don't know about. We could just kill his Pyromancer, and then we're only taking two a turn. It's probably best. Void Sinners of Sorcery? So, next turn... Um, I don't know. I think I need the time. Interesting. Oh, he's getting the token. Is he just? Gonna, he's not even going to replay it. So he's going to let me take it with Thoughtseize. That's interesting. All right. Well, Soul Side Charm first. Unit explosives is good. It's a really good draw. All 
All right, so we just covered the breeding pool. Cast a Thought Seize. We know he has your Empire Mancer and another card, land. Um, we should play out our hand here? I think we do. Land, Engineered Explosives for zero. One, two, blow it. Bye bye tokens. Play birds. All right, so he has a land. He probably just cycles with the relic here. Maybe not. Maybe he just holds it and to turn off our lingering souls and unburial rights draws. Yeah, I think he holds it. Um, stops Snapcaster. Stops Eternal Witness. Stops a whole bunch of stuff. He drew a Manamorphose. Millstrom Pulse is good. I think I just wait on this one though. I don't think I'm going to attack. I could send a message, but. I mean, I just need to draw like a Lingering Souls or a Thrag Tusk or a Baneslayer Angel or a Bring to Light. A lot of rhetoric is good. <coughs> Excuse me. So I like that after board, um, the bring uh, the bring to light gifts deck plays out um, similar to a Jun deck in the way that I'm just trying to disrupt my opponent's game plan and then uh, eventually, um, you know, like top deck better, uh, just because my deck's full of like powerful things. It's but the uh, the difference is that we have this awesome end game. Um, and like all of this synergy. So I'm going to Milstrom Pulse his Relic here. He'll draw a card. But then that'll let me like gifts and you know for my normal stuff. And go from there. He can never like cast a spell. Because then like if he has a counter spell. Um, he can never like uh, like cast a young Pyromancer or something. Uh, with the Adelon out. Because then I could just gifts. And then he can't even counter it. Even if he has a counter spell in hand. So. Uh, but back to what I was saying. Um. You know, it's just like I've got these elements that um, could be, you know, like individually weak when the pieces don't come together. But, um, you know, once after board, it, I just have access to all of these bullets that just shut down my opponent's game plan. And then once I can just completely run them out of stuff, it's just like, all right, and then draw into something good. And it doesn't really matter what it is, just as long as it's good, which is similar to how John plays some, a lot of the time. We'll see what he does here. <laughs> Casting a Pyromancer, Ascent. Pyromancer Ascension. So no other spell, no other spells for him this turn. We get a gifts. Um, and now here we could just get a creature. I think we're gonna grab a Lingering Souls here just so we can get some guys. Um, we can unburial rights and an Iona on red. He'll never be able to kill me. And then I think we want a snapcaster. No, he'll put the Iona in hand. I guess we just Iona and unburial rights. We could do, hmm. yeah, we'll just do Iona and Unburial Rights. I don't know if there's a way outside of uh, Soul Tide Charm for us to discard a card we have in hand. 
Oh, I guess we could just hard cast the... I didn't think. We could just, like, cast Iona. Which was dumb. I didn't realize that we had all the mana and everything to do it, but... There was no reason to just get Umbera Rights. We should have just got an, got an extra spell, but... What can I say? I'm bad. Alright, nothing red for you. Is it eight? I guess you could cast a void snare. Um. Man, he, casting the Inquisition there wasn't even correct, because if he does have a Vapor Snag, then I can't replay the Iona that turn. I'm so, playing so loose. Alright. So that was that. We destroyed Storm easily, 2-0. Um, blundered our way through it, and it was great. So, thanks for watching. We will be back for round two.